Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We know a lot of you already started using the custom JavaScript library feature because we've been getting a lot of feedback from you, but we wanted to make it official and make a tutorial so that everyone is on the same page when it comes to using this feature. So today's video will be focused on three key areas. The first, we'll take a look at how to install a custom JavaScript library of your choice. Then I'll show you how to make use of that library while building on AppSmith. And lastly, we'll take a look at some other cool use cases and more importantly, edge cases to have in mind when using custom JavaScript libraries on AppSmith. I'm really glad that this feature has been rolled out because we got a lot of requests for it. So it's so good that it's here because it really changes the potential of the apps you build on AppSmith. You can build way more complex things without spending as much time on AppSmith and that's really good to see. All right, enough of me talking. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at how to install a custom JavaScript library of your choice. And the truth is you can actually install a library from any link on the internet. So long you have a CDN that has a UMD build of that library, you can have it installed on AppSmith. And a UMD build is uh, a build in such a way that the modules from that library can work inside of the browser. So I'm going to show you how this is done. So once you have an app open like I have right here, um, don't pay attention to the app right now we're going to come back to it what you want to do really is go into the libraries section of your app click on the plus button and something you see is a list of supported libraries so we actually have a list of vetted libraries that we know will work well on AppSmith. you can go install from this list but um, most times you won't find the library you want in this list right now so you might want to go pick it up from a CDN of your choice. So it can be any CDN. It could be JS Deliver, the one we have right here. It can be on PKG or CDN JS. Any CDN of your choice will work. So I'm going to show you an example right now. We're going to go to JS Deliver and let's go search for a library I want to install. So let's search for, uh, let's search for Cookie JS. All right, this is Cookie JS. And what you want to do is make sure you are installing the UMD build of that library. Something you notice is that UMD builds always have a .min.js extension. So that's what you want to go for. So I'm going to go ahead to copy this URL and let's head back to AppSmith. I'm going to come over here and paste this in. And I'm going to hit the install button. And then we have the library installed. It's installed. You can see we now have Cookie.js. That's the accessor, and you can actually go ahead to make use of it. So that's one way to install libraries on AppSmith. You could also install from the list here. So let's say, uh, for the sake of the app I want to work on here, um, I want to be able to convert the table into PDF. So I'm going to install JS PDF. I'm just going to click on that and you can see it's installed. I can access it using JS PDF as you saw earlier. And the beauty of it is that this CDN can come from any source. So you can actually host static builds of any library you want to install, so long it's available on the internet. So I'm going to show you an example real quick. Let's head over to my terminal. And um, I have a directory right here that has a list of PDFs, um, rather a list of libraries. And something I'm going to do is start up a Python server and it's going to serve up all of these libraries I have here. So if we go open up a new uh, window and check what we have right in URL. So this is localhost for 8000. You can see the same list of libraries we had earlier. So let's imagine I want to install MathJax, for example. I'm going to grab the URL, head back to AppSmith. Let's go to libraries. I'm going to paste this in, hit the install button, and you see that we have MathJax installed. So um, something you should have in mind is that if you have a library that's not on any CDN, which is very slim, uh, what you can actually do is host it on your own CDNs and give apps in the link and it's just going to have it installed. So that's how easy it is. Now let's move over to how to build on AppSmith using your installed libraries in the next section. All right, so now you have your library installed and you're excited to actually build on AppSmith. How do you go about doing that? Well, just the same way you would in regular JavaScript. And I'm going to show you an example. So going back to the app, I have a table here. 
I want to be able to download this table as a PDF file. Uh, right now, AppSmith only natively supports downloads in CSV and Excel format, but I, I really want to be able to download this in PDF. So that is why we installed the JS PDF library you saw earlier. And let's go ahead to use this library to actually add that capability into our app, something AppSmith doesn't provide out of the box. So what I need to do is just like in regular JavaScript, I need to go create a new JavaScript file. All right. And um, let's clean this up a bit. Okay. So I'm going to call this function gen PDF. And what I want to do is create a new document using the uh, JS PDF constructor. So let's say const doc is equals new JS PDF dot JS PDF using the constructor. Now we have a new doc and you can think of this doc like a canvas. Of course, all of this information is going to be in the library's documentation. So you can go check this out later. The first thing we want to do with this doc is um, add a title to our document. And we're going to draw this like text on a canvas, just the same way you drag in widgets into the absent canvas. So we're going to say doc.text and the text we want to write, which is going to be the title of our table. We're going to say users, all right. And then we need to give it where on the screen we want to draw this text on. So this is going to be 20 units from the left edge of the screen and also 20 units from the top edge of the screen. So that looks good. Now, the next thing we want to do is draw the actual table on the PDF. So let's do doc dot table all right and then the first thing we want to do is give it the coordinates so this is going to be 20 units from the left edge of the screen and then we want this to be below the title so we're going to give this 30 units from the top edge of the screen and of course we want to pass in the table data so this is going to be table one dot table data and then we want to also give it the table headers which are the columns on the top of the table so this is going to be table one dot column order all right that looks good and lastly i'm just going to pass in an option to make sure that this auto sizes so i'm going to say auto size true all right, that looks good. So basically we are done here. And the last thing I want to do is make sure that this PDF document we've created is downloadable into the user's file system. So let's do, um, let's use the download function, of course. So this is going to be download. We want to download doc.output. All right, and we'll, we want to give this a file name. So this is going to be users um, list.pdf. All right, that looks good. Uh, so this is done in the JavaScript side of things. You notice we are just writing regular JavaScript using the library we have installed. And then I'm going to head back to the canvas. Um, I'm going to link up this download button to the function we just created. So let's go do that. So when this button is clicked on, we want to execute the gen PDF function. And now we can give this a try. So I'm going to hit this button. You can see that we have the PDF downloaded and then i'll try opening it up and you can see that we have exactly the same list of users as we saw on the table inside of this pdf and all of this was created using a custom javascript library on the client so this is a really really lovely feature being able to do so much more than what AppSmith has out of the box because now you can actually install a custom JavaScript library, use it like regular JavaScript and just add crazy functionalities. So this is nice. All right, to wrap things up, we're going to take a look at other use cases and some edge cases to keep in mind. Uh, so let me show you some other cool examples. Um, okay, so let's scroll back. I'm going to open up the pages. I have a few more pages. Uh, the next page I'm going to show you is form validation. Uh, so if you want to do really complex form validation outside of the regular email validation, currency validation, and uh, date validation, you can actually use other libraries to do that for you. So 
one library I have installed, if you take a look at the list of libraries I have, is Validator.js. It's a very popular library when it comes to validating user inputs in JavaScript. And you can see how I'm using it. So I'm going to open up the first input here for credit card and scroll down and show you where I'm actually using this validator instead of AppSmith. So I have this library in line and I'm just calling validator.isCreditCard and then passing in the inputs from the widget into the library and this returns true so my input is valid now if i go change this to something else so, so let's say change it to two you can see that this is now returning false and the widget is letting me know that it's not passing the validation and this also works for other really complex validations for example um, eth addresses i can go call validator dot is a theorem address and pass it the same input and it's going to do the validation same also goes for things like IP address. So if I pass in a wrong IP address, this is uh, this is an IPv4 address and this is definitely wrong. So it's letting me know that the input is invalid and that I should go fix it. And um, I'm going to show you my personal favorite, which is generating fake data. So I have a library installed called chance.js and I'm just going to open up the JavaScript file so that you see what is going on right here. So whenever this function is called, it actually generates a new user using chance.js on the fly on AppSmith right here. So let me go show you something. I'm going to call this, uh, hit this button to generate a new user. And you can see that we have a new user right here on the canvas. And the moment I hit this button again, we have new user data showing up. This is my favorite library because I build a lot of apps on AppSmith that require fake data. And right now I can just generate it on AppSmith without having to set up a database with fake data stored in it. So this is really, really useful. So talking about the edge cases I mentioned, earlier, there are a few things you need to have in mind when it comes to using custom JavaScript libraries on AppSmith. The first is that libraries that require access to the DOM are not supported right now. That's because the way libraries work on AppSmith right now, they don't have access to the DOM API. So libraries that do actually write to the DOM um, would not work. Something to also have in mind is that libraries that depend on the XHR API to make um, API requests, fetch API requests, will not work. XHR is a bit old and has some security issues, so uh, these libraries are not supported right now. But libraries that support the newer fetch API will work and are not affected at all. So um, I want you to have that in mind. And lastly, libraries that depend on set interval, clear interval, local storage, or the navigator APIs will also work right now. I know these limitations can be uncomfortable right now, but it's a small list of limitations that we're trying to shrink each day so that we support as many libraries as possible on AppSmith. But I just wanted you to have this in mind so that when you go build on AppSmith, you know what to expect. And uh, lastly, if a library you want to use does not have a UMD build, what you need to do is head over to browserify.org and create a UMD build of that library. Take the build and host it on any CDN of your choice like you saw earlier, and you should be able to use it on AppSmith with no problem at all. So those are a few things to have in mind. All right, so that's it for today's video. If you like this video, get subscribed and like the video. And there are a few more things you might want to also check out. So we did an interview right here with one of the creators of this feature on AppSmith, that's the custom JavaScript library feature. So go check that interview out if you love to learn more about the feature. And we also have a playlist right here for you to learn more about writing code on AppSmith. All right, so I see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.